God. Praise God. And we are live. Amen. Coming to you live from Vision Church of Lockhart. Um, praise God. So we're on this study on the new you and the Holy Spirit. We are on lesson uh, two tonight. Lesson two tonight. And the title of this lesson is Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. So it's so important that we make Jesus not only our Savior, but our Lord. To where we're not only a convert, but we become a disciple of Jesus. Because it's the disciples of God that experience the power of God. That experience the full freedom that we have in Christ. Amen. Um, thank you, Lord. So, you know, one thing I want to mention here is that converts, they only know Jesus from afar. Um, but a disciple, they know Jesus intimately, closely, because they walk with him day by day. Amen? And that's what God has called us to be disciples, to, to enter into God's presence, to, you know, push into the kingdom, right? The Bible says that the, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. So, as disciples, we've got to press into the kingdom of God because there's more for us. There's more wisdom, more power, more glory, not for us, but just of God, of his glory, of his power manifested in us and through us. And um, praise God. So, you know, we can't let things in life that we don't understand, that we don't know, bring us down. We've got to keep pressing in and God will reveal things by his spirit to us. Hallelujah. Amen. Oftentimes, that's how, we're, that's how we're tested in life, right? When we experience something that we don't understand, but it's what are you going to do in that moment of not understanding? Are you still going to trust God? Are you still going to give it all to him and seek his kingdom first? And so that really reveals where our heart is at. Is our heart only in this for what benefits us, or is our heart really in it for the Lord? Amen? So um, anyways, Jesus is Lord. So let's go ahead and start this. And uh, it's going to be good. Father God, we thank you for this evening. And we just praise you for your word, Lord. We just thank you for uh, the good news of, of Jesus Christ living inside of us. We thank you, Lord God, that, that you've counted us worthy. That you would send your only son to die for us. And, and to create in us a new heart. That we would become new creatures in your sight. And I just pray that our understanding would just soar through the roof, God. Yes. And who we are in Christ. And that we would continue to bear fruits that are worthy of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, so salvation is God's gift to you through faith in Jesus Christ. In Romans 6, 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Salvation cannot be earned by any amount of good works, because God doesn't give eternal life based on anything that you do. And this is what I tell people. Let me read this and then I'll. Jesus Christ did everything that needed to be done through his death, burial, and resurrection. You receive eternal life by faith in him alone. Amen? That's it. By faith in him alone. We don't need to add anything to it. Jesus doesn't need our help to purify us or forgive us. It's only the blood of Christ that can cleanse us and make us clean. Amen? So I want to go back to this statement. God doesn't give eternal life based on anything that you do. And so if uh, salvation, now this is where people might get a little bit ticked off, especially the religious people, because they don't understand the grace of God, understand salvation. And they, they take what I'm saying and they twist it to mean uh, that it's okay to sin, which is not what I'm saying. But um, if salvation has nothing to do with our works, then why do we think that our, our if salvation has nothing to do with our good works, let me put it that way. Why do we think that our bad works can cancel out our salvation, right? There's people who believe that. If I, if, you know, once I'm a Christian, once I receive God's salvation, if I act up, I'm going to lose it. And we're living in constant fear of losing our salvation because we fear, oh, I, I, maybe, I, maybe I sin this way, maybe I sin that way. We're just always thinking about sin and how we failed God. And, but God is calling us not to be sin conscious, but to be grace conscious. Right? If we were saved apart from our works, then that means that our works can't unsave us as well. That doesn't mean that our works don't matter. Paul preached many times that we were, we were saved in Christ for good works, is what Ephesians says. So good works do matter, and God prunes us that we may bear more good fruit, you know. But um, at the same time, it doesn't affect our salvation itself. Uh, it is a gift of God. So... We cannot get that twisted, right? And in, in Romans uh, 6, he, he asked that question, you know, if that, uh, 
if now that we've been saved, does that mean we can just go out and, and sin, right? We're sinning about and grace about it much more. Does that mean we can just go out and sin? He says, God forbid. We've been set free from, from sin, not set free to sin. Hallelujah. So, anyways, um, a, a Christian who is sinning doesn't really understand their salvation and doesn't really understand the work of Christ that has been done in them. And that's why, that's what we're doing this for. <laughs> so anyways, no one deserves to be saved because of their good works. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Some people act like they're, they haven't sinned as much as others and they don't need as much of the grace of God. But I'll tell you, we're all equal. All of us need the same amount of God's grace. No matter where we come from, what we've done. Uh, God doesn't deal with you in proportion to your sin. If you miss heaven by an inch, then you've missed it by a mile. Either you are completely righteous in his sight or you're not. It is that simple. No matter how good you think you are, you've been bad enough to miss heaven. Amen? Just like they say in the sports world, a win is a win. A loss is a loss. It doesn't matter if you lose by one point or 20 points. Amen? A loss is a loss. So the Lord explicitly stated that he's not just a way to the Father, but the way. Jesus says unto him, in John 14, 6, Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. Acts 4, 12 declares, neither is there salvation in any other. Hallelujah. For there is none other, uh, there, there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Either you come to God the Father through faith in his Son, Jesus Christ, or you don't come at all. There's not many ways to the Father, regardless of what the world tells us. There, there's not many ways to the Father. There's one way, and it's through Jesus. He is the only way, the only perfect way to the Father. In Mark 10, 17 through 20, and, uh, and when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why do you call me good? There is no one, uh, there, there is none good but one, and that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor your father and mother. And he answered and said to him, Master, all these I have observed from my youth. See, a rich young ruler asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And that's already the wrong question. <laughs> what must I do to inherit eternal life? So he wanted to know how he could earn his way into heaven. Notice how the young man called Jesus good master at first. When the Lord countered him by saying that only God is good, he dropped good and referred to Jesus simply as master. And by this, we know he didn't see Jesus as God. Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. He wasn't just a good man who gave us a tremendous example of humility and love. Amen. He wasn't just a prophet, right? Uh, mixed in with all the other prophets. No, he was literally God incarnate. 1 Timothy 3.16, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up in the glory. Hallelujah. Either Jesus was a deceiver or he is who he said he was. No man who claimed to be God, uh, but actually wasn't, should ever be considered good. However, there's more verifiable historical evidence proving that Jesus Christ lived, died, and was resurrected than that Julius Caesar ever lived. So every cult and religion on earth acknowledges Jesus' existence, but they stop short of calling him God. They'll grant him the status of a prophet or an inspired teacher sent from God, but not deity himself. Amen. If you just want to make the world mad, just talk about Jesus. <laughs> and the world will get upset and angry. You can talk about God. They don't really get upset when you just mention God. But when you start mentioning Jesus, amen, you see, when you mention Jesus, you think of the righteousness of God. You think of the holiness of God, the goodness of God. And the world gets upset and angry at that because of the, the spirit of the Antichrist. See, notice it's not, the Bible doesn't talk about the spirit of the Anti-God. Right? There's many gods mentioned in the Bible. Many, many gods mentioned in the Bible. But it's the spirit of the Antichrist that is in the world. Antichrist. And so that's, that's what's being attacked. That's what we have to fight for in our faith. Uh, they'll grant him the status of a prophet or an inspired teacher sent from God, but not deity himself. The rich young ruler did the same by dropping good and simply calling Jesus master. He just couldn't bring himself to believe that this man standing before him was God. And I don't mean to hate on any certain religions here, but I know um, the Jehovah's Witnesses, even in uh, 
John chapter 1, it's very clear in John chapter 1 that Jesus is God, right? Um, in, the, in, the, in the beginning was the Word, the word, was, the word was with God, the Word was God, is what the Bible actually says. But their translation says, Jehovah's Witness translation says, uh, it was a God, right? They say, the, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was a God. And so, um, so again, it's just attacking the deity of Jesus himself. He is the only way to the Father. He's not just a prophet. He is God. That's what the Bible clearly tells us. So, apart from Jesus being the Son of God, there's no way to the Father. Everything hinges on his divinity. The Lord himself stated that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honors not the Son honors not the Father, which has sent him. If Jesus wasn't God, then his life wasn't worth more than any other man's life, and he couldn't have atoned for the whole human race. However, since he was God in the flesh, his life was worth more than all mankind, making his sacrifice eternally sufficient for all. It, is, it was impossible for Jesus to live a sinless life if he wasn't God. Amen? But he was also man. And so that's what gave... That, that's what allowed Jesus to, sac to be sacrificed for us is because not only was he God, but he was also in the flesh. He was also man as well. So it's just perfect how Mary conceived of the Holy Spirit. God's plan was just perfect, the way that it happened. There was no way that any man born of a regular woman and a regular man could have lived a sinless life. There was just no way. And um, so Jesus was God, and he was also uh, man And the religious people were very, very upset by that. You know, when Jesus even hinted at him uh, being God, the Pharisees were enraged and they would scream blasphemy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so when Jesus called himself the son of God, they, man, the religious people got all upset because pretty much what Jesus had declared and what the Bible says when he said I'm the son of God is he had made himself equal with God. And that to them was like, a, you know, a big no-no. Because they didn't believe he was the Messiah in the first place, even though it was right in front of them. But anyways, Christianity is the only faith with a Savior. All other faiths depend on good works to achieve various degrees of holiness. The holier you live, the better chance you have of being accepted by that God. In essence, you become your own Savior because salvation is based on your own performance. God knew you couldn't live a perfect life. And instead of demanding that you do everything right, he came and took your sin into his own body at the cross. He suffered the punishment that you deserved to give you salvation as a gift. Hallelujah. Praise God for the Savior. Amen. Amen. Jesus took your sin so you could become righteous. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Is what 2 Corinthians 5.21 says. So God put his judgment for sin upon Christ at the cross so that you wouldn't have to bear it. Then when you believed and received the Lord, he placed Jesus' righteousness on you. This is the great exchange, as we call it, and you've probably heard many times. We, we, our sin was transferred to Jesus, and his righteousness was transferred to us. When this exchange takes place, your spirit is immediately recreated with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You are then able to fellowship with God spirit to spirit. And God even refers to us as the firstborn among, uh, or refers to Jesus Christ, sorry, as the firstborn among many brethren. Amen? So, and the Bible says that we are a co-heir with Jesus as well, because we have uh, the same Father. So God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Even when you sin, your born again spirit cannot be contaminated because of the impenetrable seal of Christ's own spirit. Just like we talked about on Sunday, that the incorruptible seed of the word was sown in our hearts. It's incorruptible. In Ephesians 1.13, it says, In whom you also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after uh, that you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So since the new nature of your spirit is always holy, you can approach God at any time and in any condition. Now that is good news. Hallelujah. Amen. The Christian life is both born in faith and sustained by faith. You'll just end up condemning yourself if you try to live it by your own works. You're always going to trip up. You're always going to stumble. And that's why it's so important for us to remember Christ is the cornerstone. Amen. He's the foundation of our salvation, not us. Because then we're going to start trying to carry our salvation and think that our salvation is up to us. Amen. We have to get our mind out of the gutter and get our mind in, in, in heaven, in Jesus' righteousness, in us. 
So as long as you're in your physical body, uh, there will be times when you fall short. If you're not careful, you'll beat yourself up trying to live right and wonder how God could ever love someone who messes up as much as you. God's love doesn't change when you make mistakes. If he went to the cross for you as a sinner, how much more does he love you now that you're a Christian? In Romans 5, 8 through 10, it says, But God commends his love toward us, and that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath uh, through him. So he mentions nothing in there about our works. We're saved by his blood. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. He loves you more now as a Christian, even when you sin, than he did when you were lost. Don't ever let your failure separate you from God's unfailing love. God gave the law to show man that he could not save himself. The Ten Commandments are, are really just the tip of the iceberg. There are literally thousands of rules to keep in the law. And anybody who's read Leviticus knows that. <laughs> so Jesus used several of these commandments in an attempt to show the, uh, the rich young ruler that we read about in Mark 10 that he would never be holy enough for eternal life on his own. And in Mark 10, 19, he says, you know the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor your father and mother. This young man genuinely thought that he could do something to earn eternal life. Doing and receiving by faith are very different from each other indeed. Hallelujah. So, you know, while, while it says in James that faith without works is dead, we must also not get it twisted. Works does not produce faith. Amen. Works is uh, it's a fruit. It's, it's not the root. And so the root of our salvation is faith and grace, but uh, we should definitely be bearing fruits, which is the works, hallelujah, to confirm our faith. So the law is like a plate glass window. Whether you break it with a BB or a boulder, it's broken. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all, is what James 2.10 says. God doesn't tell you to do your best and he'll make up the difference with mercy. Either you live holy and receive eternal life because you earned it, which is not possible, or you receive it by faith as a gift. And then this deceived young ruler needed to quit trying and start trusting. Boy, that's a, <laughs> that is a word for somebody. That just, that <laughs> rings within my spirit. Quit trying and start trusting. Amen. How, how much easier would life be? Just not, not just salvation, but with everything. Quit trying and start trusting. In an effort to convince the Lord that he deserved eternal life, he told Jesus that he kept all of the commandments since his youth. Impossible. This man's attitude had him going straight to hell. Amen. Um, and Jesus even mentions it's not just about what you do on the outside, right? But it's about your heart as well. If you hate your brother without a cause, the Bible says you're guilty of murder. If you look upon someone with lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. So it's not just the action, it's the condition of the heart. And Jesus, is, he preached and he, he, you know, he would tell us that all these things that manifest on the outside, lies and all these things, they all come from the heart. It's a heart issue. It was never an issue with just what we do. It was always a heart issue. And the gospel, it cuts straight to the heart. God's grace cuts straight to the heart. The law doesn't deal with the heart at all. The law just deals with what you do. You know? And that's, so that's why we were tormented because the law kept telling us, do this, do this, but... It, we weren't changed on the inside, but the gospel of grace, the gospel of Jesus, his righteousness, it actually penetrates our heart. And um, that's how we become saved, a new creation in Christ. Hallelujah. And slowly but surely, as we renew our mind to the truth in our spirit, as we talked about last Wednesday, um, that, that holiness, that righteousness will manifest itself on the outside of our life. So loving the young ruler, Jesus tried to bring him out of this deception. And Mark 10, 21 through 22, then Jesus beholding him loved him. It's amazing. Even in our pride, Jesus loves us. Amen? Man. Yes. And he said unto the young rich ruler, one thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have, and give to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross and follow me. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. You know what this brings to my mind is, um, this young rich ruler, there, he wanted something more, you know? I mean, he told Jesus, from my youth, I've kept all of these things. And yet, in his heart, he knew there was something more. 
And I feel like there's a lot of miserable Christians in life. Maybe it's, you know, you watching. Um, there's a lot, I feel like there's a lot of miserable Christians in life who are just, they feel like they're trying to live holy. They feel like they're trying to do good like this young rich ruler, but they just feel like there's something missing. There's more. And I'm telling you, that thing that's missing, what we need more of is his grace. We need, and that's what this young rich ruler was seeking. He didn't, he didn't know it, but what he was really desiring was something beyond just living right. Mm -hmm. he, he wanted to connect with God on a heart level, and that's what God's grace does for us. The law is not enough. And that's why Jesus called us from out from under the law into a New Testament, a new covenant of grace that is established by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if you're feeling upset in life, if you're feeling grieved in life, if you're feeling like something's missing in your life, I'll tell you what it is. It's grace. It's God's grace. Amen. Amen. It's his love. The Lord touched this man's true, um, true God when he instructed him to sell all of his possessions and give to the poor. The rich young ruler wasn't willing to lay them down and make Jesus Lord because he broke the very first command, which is you shall have no other gods before me in Exodus 20 verse 3. Amen. So God is not against you having money, but he's against money having you. Giving away all of your possessions to the poor is not a requirement for salvation. When Zacchaeus, another wealthy man, met Jesus and repented, he declared that he'd give half of all that he had to the poor. And Jesus never asked this of him, but Zacchaeus volunteered to do it because his heart had changed. See, that's what grace does. When your heart changes, you don't have to. You get to. Your heart changes. Your desires change. And that's what people don't understand about salvation is you don't come to God cleaned up. God changes you from the inside out. Yes. That's what salvation is. It's the power of his grace. The issue Jesus is driving at is who or what do you trust in as your God? Right? If you believe that Jesus Christ is only a good person and that you can get to God through many different ways, you have not truly made him Lord of your life. He may be a part of your life. You may even post scriptures on social media, but Jesus is not your Lord if he's not the only way. He's got to be number one. Jesus is either Lord of all or he isn't Lord at all. You cannot receive salvation, which comes only through him, if you aren't willing to bow your knee and acknowledge him as God and supreme ruler. Either Jesus Christ is your Savior and Lord or he's not. Amen. It's really that simple. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So we, we got to come to the end of ourself and acknowledge him as the supreme, the ultimate ruler. Thank you, Lord. He's not just, he doesn't just become a part of our life. He becomes our life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Man, God, you're so good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I just uh, feel in my heart right now, if you're, if you're watching this and you don't know Jesus, he loves you. He's always loved you, and he wants you to come to him right now. So I want you to pray this prayer with me, the prayer of repentance, to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Say, Father God, I love you because you first loved me. I realize that I am a sinner, and I am in need of your grace. For there's nothing that I can do to earn your salvation. So right now, I just repent of my sin. I, I lay my life down. I exalt you as my Lord and Savior. And I receive forgiveness by your blood. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If you pray that prayer, you are born again. And what I want you to do, um, we want to be able to bless you and... and um, send a gift to you. So if you prayed that prayer and you meant it in your heart, what I want you to do is contact the ministry. Our, our phone number is on the Facebook page um, or you can uh, message us or, you know, however you want to do it. Just get in touch with us and uh, we will be a blessing to you to help you get started on your new journey in Christ. Amen. But that's all we have for today. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to end this live video. But thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to message us or comment and we'll get back to you.